Good morning and welcome to worship on this beautiful, much cooler than yesterday, Sunday morning. I'm so glad you are here with us either in person in the sanctuary or online. A few announcements before we begin. As last week, we are still fine-tuning some of the things for those of you gathered online. So please feel free to leave a comment on the YouTube video or call or email the office to let us know if the sound is wonky or if there's anything else you think we ought to know about. A few COVID-19 reminders for those of you gathered here in person. Please do keep your masks on and maintain social distance. If you missed it on the way in, please be sure to fill out a contract tra contact tracing form on your way out so that we can contact you in case of the very unlikely possibility that someone re is, receives a COVID diagnosis after being in worship with us. The restrooms are open. They're down this hallway. Please follow the posted instructions. These protocols are here to keep our community safe. We do ask that you abide by them. If for whatever reason you cannot abide by these restrictions, we ask that you continue worshiping with us online. Durante este tiempo de COVID, seguimos siendo la iglesia, adorando a Dios, juntos, aunque no estemos todos juntos en un solo espacio. En Dios, somos una iglesia más grande de lo que podría contener cualquier edificio. Gracias. Adios. During this time of COVID, we continue to be the church, worshiping God together even though we are not all together in one space. In God, we are made one church, bigger than any building might contain. Thanks be to God. Este es el día que hizo el Señor. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us pray. Enter the gates of the Lord with thanksgiving and the courts of God with praise. Give thanks and bless God's holy name. Porque el Señor es bueno, su amor es eterno y su fidelidad no tiene fin. Amen. In the rhythm of reformed worship, we begin by gathering ourselves together with a gathering prayer or a call to worship where we give thanks and praise to God and remind ourselves that we gather as Christ's body at God's invitation. Having praised God together, we also then have to face the state of ourselves and the world together, recognizing that far too often we fall short of God's desires for us. This shift from communal praise to corporate confession is a hallmark of the Reformed tradition. Corporate is the key word there. One body. We confess individual sins, yes, but we also, and most importantly, recognize that we have failed to be the body of Christ. We confess because we know that despite our faults and our frailties, our missteps and our inactions, God loves and forgives us. So trusting in the grace of God, let us together confess our sin. For failing to love others as you have loved us. Dios de gracia, perdónanos. For wasting your gifts and hoarding our goods. Dios de gracia, perdónanos. For plundering the earth and abusing the planet. Dios de gracia, perdónanos. For fearing those who are strange to us and ignoring those in need. Dios de gracia, perdónanos. For losing heart and abandoning hope. Dios de gracia, perdónanos. For all the ways we turn from you, Dios de gracia, perdónanos. We offer these our prayers in the name of the one who saves us, Jesus Christ. Amen. Cualquiera que está en Cristo, nueva criatura es. El pasado ha quedado atrás. Todo vuelve a ser puro y nuevo. 
Beloved, believe the good news of the gospel in Jesus Christ. We are forgiven. Alleluia. Amen. spoken to our ancestors through the voices of the prophets, the breath of the Spirit, and the life of your Son, so that we may live according to your word, through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. A reading from the prophet Amos, chapter 7, beginning at the 7th verse. This is what he showed me. The Lord was standing beside a wall built with a plumb line with a plumb line in his hand. And the Lord said to me, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a plumb line. Then the Lord said, See, I am setting a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. I will never again pass them by. The high places of Isaac shall be made desolate, and the sanctuaries of Israel shall be laid waste. And I will rise against the house of Jeroboam with the sword. Then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent to King Jeroboam of Israel, saying, Amos has conspired against you in the very center of the house of Israel. The land is not able to bear off his words. For thus Amos has said, Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel must go into exile away from his land. And Amaziah said to Amos, O seer, go, flee away to the land of Judah, earn your bread there, prophesy there, but never again prophesy at Bethel, for it's the king's sanctuary, and it is the temple of the kingdom. Then Amos answered Amaziah, I am no prophet, nor a prophet's son, but I am a herdsman and a dresser of sycamore trees. And the Lord took me from following the flock, and the Lord said to me, Go, prophesy to my people Israel. Glory of the Lord. La lectura bíblica se encuentra en Amos. El Señor me mostró también esto. Estaba él junto a un muro, y tenía en la mano una plomada de albañil. Y me preguntó, ¿qué ves, Amos? Una plomada de albañil, respondí. Entonces me dijo, pues con esta plomada de albañil, Voy a ver cómo es directa la conducta de mi pueblo Israel. No le voy a perdonar ni una vez más. Los santuarios de Isaac serán destruidos y los templos de Israel quedarán en ruinas. Alzaré la espada contra la familia de Jeroboam. Amasías, sacerdote de Betel, mandó decir a Jeroboam, rey de Israel, Amos anda entre la gente de Israel, conspirando contra su majestad. El país ya no puede soportar que siga hablando, porque anda por aquí diciendo, Jeroboam morirá a filo de espada, y todo el pueblo de Israel será llevado al destierro. Luego, Amasías le ordenó a Amos, Largo de aquí, profeta, 
Si quieres ganarte la vida profetizando, profetizando vete a Judá. Pero no profetices más en Betel, porque es el santuario del rey y templo principal del reino. Pero Amos le contestó, yo no soy profeta, ni, pretender, ni pretenderle serlo. Me gano la vida cuidando ovejas y recogiendo higos silvestres. Pero el Señor me quitó de andar cuidando ovejas y me dijo, Ve y habla en mi nombre a mi pueblo, Israel. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Growing up, there was always a stone wrapped in a piece of pink string sitting in my dad's office. He had used it as a very literal sermon illustration, showing right off the edge of the pulpit how it hung straight and true, a plumb line. I was fascinated by it. I would unwrap the string and hold the end above my head, watching as the rock spun itself and swung and finally came to a rest directly below my hand. I would carefully move my hand, testing, can I make it rest in a non-straight line? No matter how I moved or what I stood on, the rock always came to rest directly below my hand a straight, taut line to the ground. If you've ever used a plumb line in construction, you'll know that a rock tied to a string does not actually make a great plumb line because you can't actually check that anything is plumb because there's a rock in the way. But it does make a good teaching tool. I bet we were the only congregation whose entire Sunday school ages 4 through 12 could identify a plumb line and its purpose. I have measured you against my law, God says, and I have found you wanting. I set a plumb line among you, and you are out of alignment. Imagine that you are the prophet Amos, only you're not really a prophet, you're a herdsman and a dresser of sycamore trees, whatever it is that a dresser of sycamore trees does. <laughs> And this is the prophecy you have been given. King Jeroboam, you have strayed from God's law, and you will die by the sword, and your people will be sent into exile. No, thank you. <laughs> Amos, as a prophet, is concerned with social justice. It is in Amos that we hear about justice flowing down like the waters, righteousness like an ever-flowing stream through Amos. We hear God's rage and sorrow at a ruler who refuses to care for his people, who turns from God and God's intention for the world. And, like many who work for social justice, Amos is not appreciated by the powers that be. The king doesn't like him. Amaziah, the priest at Bethel, wants him to go be a prophet somewhere else. Because Amos, looking at the world, says that it is not in alignment with God's desires, and he says it bluntly. He says the government will collapse, the people will be driven out. Amos speaks truth to power, and it is from these ancient biblical prophets who looked at the world and spoke God's truth that we get the phrase a prophetic voice, or prophetic preaching. In the church, there are many examples of prophetic voices throughout history. Recently, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, who rejected, denounced, and declared heresy the Christian church's complicity in the Nazis' attempt at the genocide of the Jewish people. Martin Luther King, Jr., who rejected the ideology of white supremacy in the United States. Oscar Romero, 
who spoke up for those being disappeared in El Salvador and refused to allow the Catholic Church to remain silent, speaking out clearly against atrocities. These men have something else in common. They were all killed for their refusal to remain silent, to be accomplices, for their insistence on setting out God's plumb line and demonstrating how far out of alignment the world they were living in was. Every pastor, every church, we want to imagine ourselves to be Amos. We want to be the truth tellers, the prophetic voice. From a distance of two and a half thousand years, Amos is the hero of this particular story. We desperately want to be the hero, too. But prophetic voices often pay a heavy price. Imprisonment, ostracization, exile, death. And most of us have no real desire to literally give up our lives to tell the truth. Indeed, I think we are most often like Amaziah, who at no point disputes any of Amos's prophecy or vision of the world, but would also like him to go have that vision elsewhere. Thank you. O seer, go, flee away to the land of Judah. Earn your bread there and prophesy there. But never again prophesy here at Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary, and it is a temple of the kingdom. Did you catch that? Bethel literally means the house of God in Hebrew. It's referenced throughout the Bible as a holy site. The first mention of it is early in Genesis, where Abram, before he becomes Abraham, pitches his tent. But more importantly, Bethel is where Jacob has his dream about the ladder. It's the place where God renews God's covenant, and Jacob becomes Israel. Bethel, the king's sanctuary, the temple of the kingdom. Pertinent to Amos' prophecy is this particular portion of 1 Kings. After the death of King Solomon, the United Kingdom is split into two, the kingdom of Israel in the north, the kingdom of Judah in the south. Jerusalem was already the site of the temple, and Jerusalem was in Judah. So King Jeroboam, the first king of the kingdom of Israel, made two golden calves and set one up in Bethel and the other in Dan, in the far north of his kingdom. Apparently, he was attempting to make it unnecessary for the people of Israel to leave Israel, travel to Judah, and worship in the temple there, make their sacrifices at the temple there, pay their dues at the temple there. Unsurprisingly, this was not a very popular move. I've always been sort of astonished that Jeroboam chose to build golden calves. Really? Do you not remember the whole golden idol thing on the way out of Egypt? Like, those were golden calves. But even more important than that idol that Jeroboam is promoting is that what Jeroboam is doing is supplanting God in God's own house. The holy site of Bethel has become Jeroboam's site. Bethel, Amaziah says, is the king's sanctuary and it is a temple of the kingdom. Literally, but at Bethel, never again prophesy, for the sanctuary is of the king, and it is the royal residence. God's house belongs to the king, 
Jeroboam, with his golden calves and his attempt to shift the entire pattern of his people's religious activity, has literally supplanted God. And Amaziah says nothing. He has to know Amos is right. But that's a terrifying rightness. And so rather than joining Amos in his confrontation with Jeroboam, Amaziah encourages Amos to flee. Which, to be fair to Amaziah, is probably an attempt at kindness. <laughs> Leave before you are killed. But also, your prophecy threatens my world, it threatens my place in the world, it threatens the political order, and it makes me uncomfortable because now I have to face the ways that I am not following God's law. Sounds kind of familiar, right? If I don't look at it, it doesn't exist, and I don't have to reckon with it. If I don't look at racism, it doesn't exist, and I don't have to reckon with it. If I don't look at sexism, it doesn't exist, and I don't have to reckon with it. If I don't look at structural poverty, at homophobia, at sexism, at xenophobia, they don't exist and I don't have to deal with them. And unfortunately for all of us, that is a lie. But we're not called to be Amaziah. I listed three men, well known for their prophetic voices and their tragic, violent ends. The story of the prophetic voice does not always end that way. There's Desmond Tutu and Alan Bosak, who both spoke out clearly against South African apartheid, still among the living. And there are many, many others who worked in quieter, but no less prophetic ways. There are the activists in our own denomination who worked for decades for ordination equality, who endured court, church court cases and smear campaigns who were openly compared to pedophiles on the floor of our denomination's General Assembly, who refused to leave the church that they loved, even when they were explicitly told they were not welcome, who continued to call the Presbyterian Church to account for the harms done by the church's actions and inactions, living plumb lines. It's hard to look and listen to living plumb lines. It's hard to hear what they have to say to us. It's hard to admit action or inaction that has harmed others. And it's harder still to change our ways, to do things in a new way, to end harmful practices. Yet that is what we are called to do through the ancient prophets and the modern ones. In one of the communion prayers in our Book of Common Worship, we say, When we rebelled against you, you did not abandon us, but sent prophets to call us back to your way. In another prayer, in every age, every age, you sent prophets to make your loving will known for all humanity hard as they can be to hear and to heed, God sends prophets as a guide. They are the plumb line for us, pointing unerringly to God's will for us, helping us find our way back to truth. So thanks be to God for the church in its imperfect witness to God's vision for us. Thanks be to God for the prophets, those who came long before us, those present with us today and those who will come in the future, who remind us through the ages of God's call to us and on our lives. Thanks be to God for calling us back to truth, for offering forgiveness and grace. Thanks be to God. Amen.
God has told us what is good. And what does the Lord require? To do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with our God. Let us present to God our lives and offerings, grateful for the gifts we have been given. If you are watching online, I invite you to gather your offering and prepare it to be delivered to the church. Write a check, put a stamp on an envelope. For those of you here in the sanctuary, you're invited to drop your offering in a plate as you leave this space. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us in what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love, through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
God has shown you, O oh mortals, what is good. And what does the Lord require of us? To do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with our God. So may the blessing of the triune God, holy, holy, holy Lord, be with you now and always. Alleluia. Amen.